the differential here seems to be the United Kingdom doing well, the United States doing well, and the news out of India and the Philippines is just absolutely grim. Should we get used to this new polarity? Definitely. I think most of us were expecting this to be the case yep. as different countries had different vaccine rollout timescales. And we've seen these more contagious variants take off in certain countries. And if you don't have a vaccine to basically stay ahead of them or to staunch their impact, you're going to go back to where you were, what we saw in the, the bad old days of, the, of winter or, or the spring. So many countries are not going to have this controlled well into 2022. And that's why you saw, for example, the State Department increasing to about 80 percent the number of, of countries where there is a no travel, uh, there's a travel advisory saying do not go to this country. That's going to be the case until vaccine is in, in place in those, in, in, in those individual locations. I look at those individual locations, and they can also be the United States. A couple good charts overnight of the glide path of younger people, including uh, Dr. Adelja. I should mention Jonathan Farrell having his second shot here in the last 24 hours. It's rumored he survived. And, you know, I, I, I look at the, the good news coming on, and it's the younger people coming on as well. What is your timeline where 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds in America will get back to the virus success that we see in 60- and 70-year-olds? I, I they, it's likely to be in, in midsummer or so before enough of those 20 and 30 year olds are, are vaccinated. Hopefully now with everybody eligible, everybody signing up, getting a, a date to, to go get vaccinated or some places you can just walk in here in Pittsburgh. There are many places where you can just walk in and get a shot just like the flu vaccine. That's going to make it uh, very easy and uh, will will likely continue to get more of this young group, this young group that's actually responsible for many of the cases that we're seeing right now vaccinated. And I think once we get to around maybe 40 percent of the population fully vaccinated based on Israel, I think we'll start to see a, a decline in cases the way they did. But we've already seen benefits in terms of hospitalization, as we've talked about before, because our old, our older individuals were who were taking up hospital beds, the ones who are most likely to have severe complications. And that's not happening uh, so much anymore because how, how many of them have been vaccinated. Dr. Adalja, what's the latest on trans transmission for people who have been vaccinated. In other words, whether they can actually pass the virus on to other people. The data that we've we've accumulated so far shows this to be extremely rare. It doesn't mean zero, but I, it, it's extremely rare and something I think people could be comfortable with in terms of not having to worry about being a carrier of this virus. Certainly, if there's an outbreak, you're not going to be looking at the vaccinated people to say, were they the ones that actually spread this? It's going to take some time for public health guidance to catch up. That's why we still have uh, pretty conservative guidance for what vaccinated people can safely do. But to me, I think in terms of risk tolerance, I'm not worried about vaccinated people spreading this virus. And I tell people to go back to their life as much as possible once they've been fully vaccinated. I seem to be a little bit ahead of some of my colleagues on this, but, but that's, that's how I think these vaccines are, are, are working. And, and we have real world data from many countries like, uh, like Israel that show that transmission does go down. And there's even data from Pfizer that it's very hard to even be infected if you're fully vaccinated. So I, I do think they, they decrease spread as well as serious, serious illness, hospitalization, and death. Dr. Adalja, based on this two-tier inoculation schedule where much of the world is way behind the United States and the United Kingdom and Israel, how quickly can we see international travel pick back up? It's going to be something that takes some time. There are going to be countries that have the ability to travel between each other easily without much much friction, I suspect, like the United States, United Kingdom, United States, Israel, the Seychelles Islands, Bhutan, all those places that have got very, very high vaccination rates. But even for the United States and Canada, it's going to be some time. What will likely happen is vaccinated individuals may still have to quarantine or get a test before they go into those countries, and, and, and likely the same on the return back to the United States, even if they're vaccinated. So. It's probably into 2022 before the world has some semblance of normalcy in terms of international travel, meaning all countries. There's going to be kind of green zones where, where vaccine uptake is high that make it very easy to go to, but other parts are going to be difficult, including places just close as Canada.